And we're reconvening into open session from executive session. Would everybody uh, stand and... Uh, <laughs> 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 Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a motion to sign Treasury Warrant 13 Payroll. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to uh, accept minutes of November 20th. The board is down one member, but I'm going to have to recommend anyway that the two members present uh, move to accept those minutes because you're not going to get a third member to do it. That's true. <laughs> November 20th is actually fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's December fine. 4th. Mm -hmm. it's December 4th. So I'll make a motion to uh, accept December 4th as presented. Do I have a second? That would have to be you. Uh, I second it. You and I are all in favor, huh, Sheila? Yep, all those in favor. All those imposed? None. <laughs> About uh, November 20th. November 20th, Mike, Wayne, myself. Sure, I'll make the motion to accept uh, November 20th. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Let's see. We're going to go into appointments. Uh, Mans, uh, so this is for a class two. License. I'm sorry, it's class one. I'm sorry, class one. I'm sorry, my mistake. Oh. Good. You want to see it? Green. The other one is just a correction on Greg's restoration on the premises. Is that right, premises? On a typo. Do we need a motion on this? Yeah. I'll make the motion to uh, uh, approve a class one license for a man's RV. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Here you go, Jeff. It'll be available tomorrow that for you. Merry Christmas. Christmas. There were some typos on the other. No, this one that's coming down. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Tuttle. Thank you guys. I'll have the um, Will you identify letter. yourself, please? Oh, I'm Rebecca Tuttle. I'm the treasure collector. Um, I am proposing a change to my office hours um, in at the tax collector and treasurer collector's office. Um, over the last couple of years, we've noticed a significant de decrease in the number of residents coming into the tax collector's office to pay their bills. And to go, go along with that, we've seen an increase in the number of payments coming through our online bill paying option and uh, that the town offers to the tax players. Um, I actually did some specific statistics where uh, I compared FY17 second, second quarter tax, taxes and how they were paid to FY18's ta second quarter taxes. And we had a 20% increase in the tax payments that came in um, using our online uh, payment option. We had a 43% increase in tax payments coming in through the mail. Um, we had a 30% decrease in receipts that came in just from people coming into the office. Um, 
I am proposing that the office hours for the tre just for the treasurer collector's office be changed to Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays, 8, 8 a.m. to 4.30. Um, this actually gives you, right now we're open 33 hours to the public. This would actually give us an extra hour, and we'd be open um, all afternoon on Thursdays. The only th thing we'd be eliminating would be the Tuesday evening hours. Um, I would be available if somebody needed to come in um, and could not get there during the day. I could make an appointment with them to come in. So I would like your your blessing on changing the hours to 8 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday. I've uh, submitted a recommendation to the board that I support, um, that I support Becky's intent to change the weekly public uh, hours. Um, opening full days on Thursdays um, is not only going to add one additional, one net hour to the public um, each week, it's also going to be consistent with the community hall annex, which I think is really important. So the, both buildings will be open consistent hours, which, um, which I think is important. As good as that is, the concern would be is we have a large population that are commuters. They leave town and they come back. And sometimes the only time they have access to town hall is during the evening hours. I don't know if you uh, have any numbers or uh, that's when I use. Right. The, uh, um, actually, know. in the last, over the last month and a half to two months, I've, you know, there have been like one or two people that have come in okay. into the office on Tuesday evenings. So I don't it's, have, now, is there a staffing the, concern? Uh, I'm trying to understand where, what precipitated this. It's just, I, I just feel it would, we would better serve the public um, being open those extra hours on Thursday than the Tuesday evenings. Um, we don't answer the phones Thursday afternoons, and, right. and there's a lot of tax services and attorney's offices that call for bank information. Right. Um, so I think it would just be better, we'd be better serving the public um, that Thursday afternoon because it's not, the phones don't ring Tuesday nights. There's, I mean, the clerk's office will still be open. Um, it's, this is just for the treasurer collector's office. <clears throat> right, so if we have one department open, <coughs> why wouldn't we have the other? I mean, because I don't, we're, I don't know. we're really, I mean, I know over the past, the history of the, the right. office has right. been the treasurer collector and tax and town clerk have right. been one office. Right. But they're really not, in, there's no inter, inter, it's not intertwined. Right. For, for the things that we do, the processes that we do are not intertwined yeah. at all. The no, I get that. Office, I'm just looking at it from public access. The I mean, clerk's I understand. office needs um, evening hours or, or for marriage licenses, people that actually have to come in and um, do things in person, and those evening hours are something that's, that's I would say, would be needed by the, the clerk's town office. Did, but did say that um, marriage licenses, marriage intentions are the thing that comes in on Tuesday nights most That frequently. makes sense. Yeah. I get that. Right. For the record, if there's a ZBA decision that needs to be signed. They sign it. They come in all at different times, but they get it signed <coughs> on a Tuesday night, and we clock it in. So we we have different purposes for being there. Right. This is this. My purpose is to people paying their tax bills, right. and we have the online access um, that they can pay. There is also the drop box in the front of the building. Uh, we have a lock box that where the the funds go and and they electronically sell us send us the um, data afterwards. So there's a there's a lot a lot of other ways besides people coming in the office to pay their bills. Um, no, I, I get that. I mean, we're in the electronic age, and they're that's understandable. Yeah, and and they're they're not coming into the office. We used to see lines out the door, and that's that's not even on tax ta the days that the tax bills are due. There's there's rarely a line out the door. So they're using that technology. Um, so, Becky, I think, you know, I kind of expressed similar concerns to you a few days ago uh, when I was talking to you about it. And I think uh, as much as I would have liked to have seen us maybe talk about it and activate it later, I I know you, you know, kind of give people notice to say, you know, effective whatever, our date, yeah, whatever our date is, we will be changing the office hours and here's why. Please please plan ahead, please plan accordingly. Um, I do get what you're saying. I appreciate that you did the stats for it. Um, and I think 
you know, to your point, because you and I talked about it, as long as it's been, it's going to be made very, very clear that people can still make appointments with you and mm -hmm. that you'll make yourself available after hours, not just on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that that will help things. I do hope, too, maybe that, you know, because we are looking at more people using tech and paying online, that maybe we maybe take a second look at the Unipay portal. Yeah, there actually, there is, I, she came in, uh, the, our representative, okay. and they do have um, the ability to pay after the due date. It'll calculate okay. the interest and everything for you. And um, one of the other options that they started offering is, is a uh, uh, <coughs> bill payer. Okay. You know what I mean? So you can schedule your payment, that I, type of stuff. So we will be in instituting that in the next couple months. Okay. Because I think as it stands, if I go to the town of Rutland homepage, <coughs> the tax collector online payments link is that first one at the bottom. Yep. It's not as intuitive as probably we need it to be. I think for some people, if we are looking to push, you know, as many people as we can onto online payment, I think a lot of them want to do it online. I don't know that it's as easy as we think it is for them. I'm, I'm sitting here clicking through it right now, and there's just a couple of things. So hopefully, okay, you and Pay can work with us. And okay, you know, I mean, because it, yeah, all right, I'll talk to him about it. To your point, I think one of the things for this to be implemented <laughs> is some dual notice so we're looking at starting this january 1st which is you know right. days that's, away. that's so that they'd be printed on the next the hours would be printed yeah. on the bills that are right. going out um this week i guess if we were to give 30 60 day notice to the general public and go ahead and print that as you see fit but at least give the general public 60 days notice to know that we're going to make, as Sheila pointed out, make appropriate adjustments. This is what you need to do. When's the next uh, tax cycle? It's it's due February 1st, so the bills are going out this so week. Well, if the bills are going out this week, then the notification is there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right, so that the letter, that the hours would be effective, uh, the new hour starting, uh, if the bills are due February 1st through the 30th, correct? Is that the deadline, 1st through the 30th? No, they're, they're, the bills are going out on January 1st, and they're due February 1st. Okay, and then so that's the for real estate fourth tax. Quarter, yeah, the fourth quarter is um, okay. due May 1st, and they're both in the same billing. Okay, so if we Mailing. gave 60 days Sorry. notice, <coughs> that uh, the new hours would be and printed and going out with the tax bills would make sense? 30. I don't care. 45? If due February 1st? Yeah, 45. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just using the yeah, calendar. It provides My, some sort of grace period. Right. Exactly. I would yeah. just like to bring up that February 1st falls on a Thursday, so we'd be open all day on That's Thursday. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. A few days. Yeah. But both bills go out in January, so people are getting their May bill in with the tax request. Okay. Right. So, so the hours right. would be printed on that, that bill that's going out mm -hmm. um, next week mm -hmm. with a February 1st due date. Okay. So the hours would become effective starting the February 1st. February 1st, is that what we're saying? Or the following week? So I'm torn on this one. I'm not, you know, it's huh. pitch black outside. I'm not sure the value of keeping you in the office on a Tuesday night in the middle of January when the bills aren't due until February 1st and nobody's coming in. I, some I people do, see do pay early, but <laughs> some do, some do. But the ones who pay early aren't necessarily yeah. coming in at Tuesday and they're, night they're at eight. They're doing it online. So yeah. do you want to yeah. do just right. that Tuesday before the first, the, the last Tuesday of January? Is that what you're saying? I mean, I think she's looking for some flexibility, and I'd almost, I'd almost say, you know, consider we've discontinued the Tuesday night hours. We weren't seeing a lot of traffic. We appreciate that, you know, that you're all making an effort to right. pay your bills early. Do it online. Do everything. They'll continue to make appointments as requested. Right. If, um, they, if they contact the office, but sure. you know during regular business hours and say, I can't get there, I need to talk to you, I will say, okay, well, I'll stay. And, and what time may, can you get here? And then maybe in effect for this transition on right. February 1st, maybe you'll stay open a little later. Because mm -hmm. that day is your busy day, right? Bills are due. Is that your busy day? It's February it, 1st? It, it well, it, it, there's a constant stream. And constant if we are stream. open till 4.30, that, like, it's, like Lynn said, it's a Thursday, Yeah. Um, where we normally we would close at 1. Yeah. yeah. So we're be, we'd be open that day till 4.30. But again, what are we doing to the taxpayers that don't come back into town? We're just going to force them to use the other three methods, I guess. Because um, which a lot of them, yeah. a lot of yeah. them really do. I don't know what I don't know if the right word is force. I think sort of oh, yeah. guiding them through the process of making it easier for everybody involved, especially them. 
Yeah. But but to the point of allowing them to come in to see you at night if they need to, they'll need to plan ahead. They we're can't here just... working for the public, and but when if we're limiting yeah, public hours, access, how many how many that's town just, that to me just we're actually goes not con- we're, we're actually gaining an hour. Well, yeah, yeah, I get it, but, but it's yeah. not the hours that some of the I, I guess my personal thoughts is those that are commuters that are not necessarily in town. Now they will right. have to make adjustments. How many state or town agencies do you see open at night? A lot of the town halls. Everybody, everybody does the, business the during clerk, the day. The clerk's office. There's a lot of clerk's offices yeah. that are open in the evening. There's, yeah. you know, the the treasurer collector is another animal. You know, okay. um, where, I mean, and we haven't seen the foot traffic so okay. of people on Tuesday a lot nights. More envelopes in the drop box yeah. every single day. Definitely. Than we do all week with people coming in on Tuesday nights. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that then when they, they can access, you know, to wrap their bill off in the drop box, you know, after hours. Mm-hmm. And we pick them up every morning and post them that day. So Mr. Sullivan, I don't know if you saw him, Skip. Yeah, I, I saw him down there. Okay. Just a quick comment. I mean, the, the office is literally open 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you have a drop box. Yes. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't and know the what online the problem pay- is. The online I mean, payments are available 24-7, too. Good point. All right. So we're going to say you can go ahead. Do we want it in a motion form or not? Or we I'll can put just it in a motion form if you enough. like. And are we going to use, uh, to Sheila's point, uh, January as a transition month? Uh, no, my point was I don't know that keeping her here January, Tuesday nights has is going to be all that easy. I don't useful. think we need it. Just go start January 1st. So no, I, January no, where 1st. I was headed was a late, a late um, day on Thursday the 1st. Oh, that one day? Yeah, yeah one day, yeah. This is what I think I heard. That's where I was headed. It kind oh, of, the deadline it kind of stopped at 4.30, but, <clears throat> but whatever you think that time needs to be um, for those sort of people who trickle in that don't want to be late, is it close of business, which is at that point? No, we, the, the, actually, the, what we get on the Dropbox the next day is, is good for that day. Okay. So, oh, yeah. all right. So. <clears throat> Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> we're good with I guess we're all accept as submitted. I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> we're going to open the poll hearing on <clears throat> Glenwood Place. How would you like to come up and talk to us again, young man? <laughs> yes, I. Um, I guess if the uh, selectman secretary had a day off today, did you? Oh no, I guess got not. the got the petitions. Okay, got both so. petitions. There's one for four polls. There's one for seven polls. Okay. So you did a a partial, and then you did the full seven polls. Yes. I would suggest that the board look at the seven poll, um, and also look at legal counsel's recommendation on the form of the motion. So where there have been questions about the uh, the status of Glenwood Place as a public way or private way and where the public way ends, the, the private way starts, there's been a lot of research done, especially by uh, Town Clerk Anita Carlson. Uh, <coughs> the portion of the public way that the town has considered, uh, the portion of the way that the town has considered a public way uh, is 0.4 miles from Glenwood Road uh, down Glenwood Place to approximately the flagpole. Um, that was first reflected in one of the um, in, in one of the states used to be I think it used to be chapter 80 or chapter 90 basically notices saying that 0.4 miles of road was recognized as a public way. The town has continued over those many years to maintain that portion of the way as a public way. And so we brought the question to uh, legal counsel as to how the board should uh, tackle the poll locations given you the restriction that the um, that the orders be for polls located on a public way and she recommended um, (coughs) the form of motion that you have before you um, in the email titled Glenwood Place Poll Locations and that is to um, advise the applicant that granting the poll location does not recognize does not automatically recognize the way as a public way. 
So if you'd like to tackle all seven polls and read this, uh, this statement at the end of the motion, I think that would suffice. That's going to be written in the minutes. But I, I want to clarify something because mm -hmm. now I'm reading that, you know, that research was done, that Anita went back mm -hmm. into state roads lists back to 1934 and 1940. Mm -hmm. And so here is wow. my question for Gary, I guess, and for any member of the planning board looking at you. Um, if four tenths of a mile is what we end up with as the public way, Gary, which is what you believed it always was, right, the flagpole, how would that have changed the original project, which was deemed to not be a development, not be a subdivision, because of what was said to have been a public way that went a lot farther. I don't, uh, well, in, in my eyes, the public way never went a lot further than what I've stated from the get-go. Okay, but the planning board's decision was based on the argument in the planning board meeting, and I read those minutes. Mm -hmm that the public way extended far past where that flagpole is and that because of that extension that it was a public way well past that flagpole that that was an existing road and that the driveways coming off of it did not constitute a subdivision i think the a and r law though says adequacy of a way it doesn't specify public way although public way is recognized in that plan you're referring to that 300 foot section but a and r the a and r law uh, law says Adequacy, adequacy of a way, not, um, not, pub, not necessarily public way. Adequacy of, of a way. way. And so that was the determination that needed to, of a way, that was a determination. But that's exactly the issue that we've had with every neighbor from that existing road coming in and saying that this way was not adequate, that it was a tiny, narrow, dirt road with high bankings on each side. And it said cat path on the original ANR. And I was the dissenting one. I did not ex I did not sign that ANR. So Oh I did sign the ANR, but when he came in with the uh, <laughs> anyways. So I guess here we are again and I you know I apologize to National Grid, this is so not your problem, except we're <laughs> making it your problem. You know, this is exactly what happens every time. The rules get changed based on the needs of the day. So today's need is that the public way goes to X. And three months ago's need was that the public way actually extended far past that, and this isn't a subdivision. And now we're supposed to just say, okay. On poll, you're, the only jurisdiction here that the board has is on the poll locations, and the language that legal counsel gave you uh, should be written into the minutes uh, to memorialize the fact that the board doesn't necessarily constitute the way as a uh, constitute the way a public way. But that other issue should be looked at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. To me, this changes the planning board's decision. To me, this should have been re should be revisited. To me, this is research that should have been done when it was before the planning board. And Trust me. The planning board relied on an engineer's plan that was inaccurate. That may have been purposefully inaccurate. Mm -hmm. And the cellar hole they kept on pointing out is not necessarily the cellar hole that I, or it wasn't a, that was a house that I remembered when I was young. It was on the wrong side. So. Henceforth, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I asked. We need to have a certified list of roads in town here, period. So we don't go through this ever again. We are pre to this at the last board meeting. Yes. We are pursuing a road study, a comprehensive road study to be done by uh, WPI, uh, hopefully WPI uh, engineering, and really compile all the historical data we have on every single road in town. But that's not going to address what I, you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, Margaret, my concern is that, you know, wherever this was going to rear its ugly head, it happened in the application for electric service, which is an issue with the original project. So where does that place us? I don't know. I'm not and, and I'm reading I'm reading what legal gave us mm -hmm. that we could grant it because I see your point that the issue is not with the placement of a pole. Right. But the issue is with the provision of electrical service mm -hmm. to a section of houses that by rights, as far as I can tell based on what we're reading, should have been a subdivision and are not meeting the rules of a subdivision. And in possibility, might not have ever been able to have been cited the way they were cited. 
which would change the poll locations. That's where I'm headed. So that brings us to the fact that we only approve the poll locations that are on the public way, and that's it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing. Yeah. And that's what we talked yeah. about last meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, just one thing I know this is a bit. Um, when we get plans, we get plans that are approved by or should be approved by the planning board. So, planning board approves it, it's in there, we have to go with it. For this plan, though, there was, and the discrepancy I found, the only thing that I have on record would be from the registry of deeds. You have the Exhibit A, I call for the whole seven poles down between uh, property line between what we have is pole 22 and pole 23. <coughs> that was the latest one by um, uh, New Wheel Environmental, uh, Julian Votroba did in, in just this year. Uh, back in 80, uh, 1985, um, there was another sur surveyor that, as far as I can see, um, really put the end of Glenwood Place at the lot line of, of 80, at where that lot line ends, which would be Exhibit B, basically. Um, the rest of it is listed as an old cot path. But in this case, both the private road follows that cot path pretty much exactly. So that didn't actually change, so I don't know if that... Um, would change if you're considering an old cot path, uh, and that is a legal term, um, as a private road, then really the the uh, the boundary of that private road, or you know, the scope of it didn't change. So I don't know if in that case, but no, but I think to what you are saying, the fact that there was a discrepancy in where the public way ended absolutely affected the way the entirety of this project and the X number of houses was approved mm -hmm. because had it been listed and approved as a subdivision there would have been as you know far different requirements put upon it yeah and and in like i say in point of fact the, the poles might have had to have been in a different place you know you're looking at these long kind of shared driveways because of what's being worked up there or you're looking at a lot of kind of unique placement um in an yeah, so I could, we, yeah, we would put it, I put a, a pole on basically, yeah. so exactly. they're only 80 feet or 77 feet away, but that's because if we need to go down that long driveway, we can without impinging on someone else's right. property. Right. So. <clears throat> so, board's prerogative, you have the two petitions in front of you. One is for the four poles um, for the known uh, or for what is understood to be the public way, the other is for all seven poles. Um, so if the board does approve the four polls without these conditions that, um, that legal counsel has laid out, the additional polls uh, should be granted as long as you, t as long as you, as you cite this because there's no evidence, there's no evidence as to the status of the way. It's just understood one way or another. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you left me confused. I, I'm saying so. uh, the uh, the easiest way for the board to tackle this is to take the seven is to take the the petition for the seven polls so to, and to include that language. Okay, so not two different approvals. One approval. I think it's easier to the do seven the one and add the language. Add the language. All right. On I don't all want of anything it. to do with with approving polls on private property, even with a disclosure. No, I I, I don't know why we would do this because again. This is a process that came this far because of changes that were made to a project. And now this is information that should have been, that should have been considered months ago. What you can't do is, I know uh, Exhibit B would be the four definite polls that are in the public yeah. way. Yeah. You could approve that and then like the legal language that was added in case the public road really has been determined to go uh, longer Before. then you would you you've already approved the polls on that condition if it ever becomes but right. it, at least you covered. But I don't know why we wouldn't take legal advice from our own legal counsel you, you recommend we should yeah therefore I'll put it on the table um, that uh, what's it grant the poll locations provided the application meets other requirements and to address the issue of the portion of the way that the town disputes is a public way, state uh, the applicant is advised that the grant poll 
of poll location by the Rutland Board of Selectmen does not constitute a finding or determination that the road street or portion of the road street where the applicant proposes to install the poles and other facilities is in a public way. Is a public way. Do I have a second? No, I'll second it then. If it wasn't uh, council's recommendation, I'd be have a different uh, opinion on it. But I, I think my concern. I understand where council is coming from, specifically from the polls. So why would we adhere to their advice? Because I don't believe that council, council gave us nothing to the bigger picture and the more complicated picture. Yeah, but we're not dealing with that. We're dealing with the poll. Except Which could we be. are. Except we, could we be. are. We mean it's too late. The A&R has been signed, and the only way you can change it now is But you to signed it with, with yeah. the knowledge that the road extended a lot further than it did, which is not true. And by the way, by us granting these poll locations, we would be, despite this one sentence, effectively agreeing to the fact that we took the word of the developer as to no yeah no. I, I don't know that that one sentence no, that, protects us I'm not I'm just well that's that's fine that's my concern I think this is a bigger issue than just the placement of electric poles but you have the town administrator and town council telling us can the board um, is the board uh, is there consensus on the board uh, to approve at least the four poles that are on the understood to be public way do you have an issue with that, Wayne, as well? No, as long as it's the public way. Okay. And Gary, then you're I'll, okay then with I'll that. Then I'll modify my motion then. You're okay. modifying it to four poles. To the four poles the are four on the public poles way. on this petition. On the petition that says they're on the public <coughs> way. So that, that would be exhibit B that as I put Correct. down the sketch. Okay. Correct. The order's going to have I to only have though. lots of copies of A. I just want to make sure it's I see right here. I, I do have an extra no, copy. He's on okay. the back. They're right there. Eight, the right there. Yeah. So we'll have to do that after. Gary. So this is polls. Locations marked adequate with you? Yeah, as uh, um, um, I initially stated, Wayne, um, I, the first petition that we got from the grid was for four polls. Um, and at that time, I again stated the flagpole was mm -hmm. the boundary. And uh, shortly thereafter, we got a petition for seven polls, and that's when this all started. So these four polls are, are marked and are adequately off edge of roadway. Okay. Public. public, understood roadway. to be public way. Okay. So I, so I got a motion. Do you want my, I'll, I'll second the motion for the four polls on the public way. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the board will not address the other three polls. Um, we do have to, could you send us modified orders for the four? For the four poles, uh, the only ones we have here are for the seven. If oh, no, no, I, I, I have those right here. You have here. those? Okay. Yeah, I have, I, I made, okay. Um, do you have the orders, the actual orders for the yeah. board to sign? Okay. Oh, this is the petition, but do you have the actual orders for the locations? Um, I'll show you what they look like right here. Oh, no, oh, no. I mean, I just have the copy of the petition. Okay. So, all right. So, what we're so going to do. I guess um, the clerk who takes care, they might have, was already sending something in the mail for you. Okay. All right. That was my understanding, but I'll I'll double check on that. Okay. So I'm going to need the board. The board has already has voted, or yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So the board has voted. So we're going to have to get the orders and have you sign. That's after. fine. Okay. okay. All right.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Night. One of these will be easy one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> Getting there. Uh, okay, so that is done. How about public comment? Mr. Sullivan. General public comments? General public comment. <sighs> Please introduce yourself. Mike Sullivan, Crawford Road. Uh, serve on the RDIC in town. I, I, I was hoping Wayne was going to be well. I'm here really just to update the board on um, the status of where we are at Rutland Heights in regards to Christopher Heights. Um, as you folks all know, we had a meeting on, I think it's December 9th, um, that you folks were all invited to. And Skip, thanks for being able to come and taking the time. Um, I think we had a very productive meeting. Uh, we met with the president of the uh, Christopher Heights. Uh, he gave us a very detailed tour of the whole facility, gave us an explanation of what they want to do, how they want to do it. Um, bottom line really is the, the money issue that we have to deal with that was spelled out in the original um, uh, submission by them. So Margaret and I have been working together, and Margaret, thanks a lot for all your efforts. Um, we are trying to, and I think we will probably the second week in January, uh, schedule a meeting. We've been in contact with Congressman McGovern's office. I mean, Congressman McGovern's office, um, Representatives Ferguson and Gobi, and the Worcester Business Development Corporation. So we're trying to set up a meeting with that group and um, obviously you folks, uh, anybody that's, that wants to come, to try to coordinate our efforts to see how best to, to I don't know if attack's the right word, but to attack this and, and um, hopefully move forward. So that's really all I'm here for, just to kind of give you folks an update. And again, Skip, <coughs> thanks for the time. you have any comments on what you saw? Or? I was impressed. I really was impressed. Yeah. People were, all of them, all the people there were great, mm -hmm. very, inf very informational. Quite a facility. Yeah, it was great. Nice, pristine, and that's one of the older ones. That's right. Yeah. And you'd be interested to know they have a bar in, yes. the, in the facility. <laughs> it wasn't open the night we were there. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Unfortunately. Can you tell us about the financial package? Well, it's, the bottom line is they're asking for a million dollars from the town. The re and the reason for that is because Mass Development, who would be financing the project, requires a financial commitment from the, the host matching. community. Matching, yeah, okay. matching. So we are working. Um, I've contacted Becky. We're in contact with the assessor's office to see how, um, frankly, um, if this project could allow us to break even or better uh, based on the revenues that we'd expect from the lease and taxes. Approximately seventy thousand dollars, I think. Seventy is what to we'd seventy-five. This yeah, and uh, and offset our any debt service against that. See if we would actually break even to allow a facility like that to be kind of the cornerstone uh, project and attract other businesses. The other thing we're going to do, the RDIC, is um, somehow hook up with the senior uh, folks in town to see what kind of interest they may have in actually using the facility. Um, because I think that would be a big plus as well. The, the other thing to remember, too, and I know I mentioned this before, the entire population of this project will go towards our 40B requirement, which we all know we're woefully <coughs> below uh, right. what we're supposed to have. So uh, that like would be a huge help. Resources from the State Office of Elder Affairs <coughs> uh, that could uh, bring us yeah. some assistance? Well, again, I, I think the, our first step is to try to get our elected officials involved so that they can send, you know, okay, here's the fee, here's the folks that need that, you know, can help us. Uh, okay. We want to, we really want to try to line up any federal and state resources that are available. Well, that's uh, why I was thinking of Elder Affairs. Yeah, that is a good point. I, and I did meet with Nancy Nichols today, the Council on Aging Director. She's going to put something in writing to RDIC with some, you know, maybe some feedback and comments about mm -hmm. that type of So thing. that was my question, because to me, a project like this, especially with a, a taxpayer buy-in, there should be taxpayer reward, I think. So, I mean, obviously our existing senior center is ridiculous and woefully inadequate. And so to what you just mentioned, well, could, could local Rutland residents who are not Christopher Heights residents use their facility? That's very different from 
do we look at the possibility of a senior center, whether it's attached or adjacent, mm -hmm. as part of this project, it, it working in conjunction with them? I don't mean them funding it. I don't mean losing this project because we're demanding things. But I mean working yeah, as a cooperative Yeah, it could muddy the waters. Project. That could muddy yeah, the waters. Yeah, it could muddy the waters. But, I mean, it's a legitimate it's something point. something to look at. I mean, they're asking for two and a half to three acres of land. So, yeah. I mean, if we look at the, the area <clears> next to Mozio's, I mean, I think that's about a six acre parcel so I mean let's just suppose they need half of it you, you mean know. the abutting piece to Maple Ave that, correct that as you're going into the entrance the, area, the, the area was the, where the trees were cleared the pine okay. the pine to the right or to right. the left to the, to the right, right. When you're right. Going in. okay let's just try to get a bearing so walking distance to the center of town mm -hmm. on Sidewalk. the existing sidewalks yep okay yeah I mean to me you know, we're going to be trying to find a million dollars from our end. We should be trying to find some other things as well. Mm. Our population, our aging population is only increasing. This mm. will increase it even further. My understanding is Christopher Heights is mixed as well, right? It's assisted living, but there are varying levels of independence. Correct. Um, well, not really. Not, really. not, not in no. this facility. There's, a, no. there's Christopher Heights, and then there's... Christopher House. Christopher House. Christopher House is a nursing home. Okay. And a, and a, it's closing and a, a, we're closing nursing homes everywhere. Right. Yeah. Christopher Heights is assisted living. Okay. Um, so to your point, Sheila, I, and, and I think Wayne agreed that, you know, there might be an opportunity for senior center, rec center, but not necessarily as part of that project. I didn't get any indication from that meeting that there would be any kind of... Um, oh, they're certainly not going to contribute to that. Yeah. Right. That no, that's, that's actually no. not no, no, what I'm I suggesting. I understand. That's not what you oh, said. No, but. Not at all what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is on our end, if we need mm -hmm. to find a million dollars to help move their end of the project along, mm -hmm. along, we should be finding Yes. We should be finding some other funding to give the residents back more because mm -hmm. Christopher Heights is not necessarily going to give it's a great project. It's going to give us a great tax base, but it's not going to give our residents anything to use mm -hmm. unless we So then here we yeah. go back to the Department of Elder Affairs. Right. So basically, at the end of the meeting, I asked, okay, what do you need from us? And the answer was, look, really all I need is for y you as a town, whether it be the select board or a town meeting, which I don't think it's necessary at this point, I I all I need is for you folks to say, yeah, in general, we're interested in this. We, you know, we're interested in pursuing the project. We, we don't yet know how to get our million dollars, but we're willing to work at it. And if we make that commitment, that kind of commitment to them, they will then make a commitment to do the demographic studies and everything else to determine whether it's even viable for them to build in Rutland. So basically what they're asking for us, from us is some sort of commitment so that they can then start making equipment of their own. Makes sense. No cost. Makes sense. And so meanwhile, we do our due diligence. We have yeah. our meetings. We look <clears throat> at the f finances. We, we look at um, – uh, they don't do TIF, TIF agreements anymore, so I don't think we'd be getting into, any, into anything like that, but looking at um, estimated tax revenues generated from the project and things like that. So, so what do you look, want to see? So you would like us to say, yes, we support it? Well, I mean, I do, but uh, we've got three other members of the board. Yeah, no, I, I certainly think this would be a help, and I'm not asking you to do it this second, but I, I think, I think um, again, finance committee, select board, you know, to get together and say, yeah, this is worth pursuing, uh, so we can go back to them with a legitimate, yeah. I mean, We can put it on the next FinCom uh, meeting, joint meeting with the select board and have a uh, discussion. Mike can come and uh answer any questions that might be from either side. We did have one. Well, we did have at least one member of the FinCom attend. Uh, one or two. Two, maybe. Two. Um, and clearly a project like this uh, could attract other similar type mm -hmm. businesses. Um, uh, there are a couple of towns, cities and towns that are actually doing Christopher Heights projects or have done Christopher Heights projects and have planned mixed use. They have actually yeah, planned sense. to build makes sense. add businesses be, and have that as kind of the foundation. Makes so. sense. Couple of them, one at least, and I think a couple of them were on old state hospital property. Yes, they were. Yes, so, two I mean, of them. Interesting. Say that again, though. They worked with Christopher Heights to make one of the structures mixed the, use. The community, no. community yeah. actually the community planned community mixed planned use it. with with Christopher Heights as kind of this in the cornerstone. Rest of the property. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, as the anchor, almost okay. like you're building a mall. You put the anchor in the middle, oh, and then you it. build around it. Yeah. So you have um, similar type businesses. What are we looking at time frame wise for the tax impact information? We've certainly, I mean, we've certainly lost things in the past yeah. because of 
and I don't even mean just people well, thinking of other things. But they've uh, been asked to provide a pro forma uh, to the assessors, and the assessors would need that to really uh, try to project that. Um, Becky and I are supposed to be meeting with our financial advisor tomorrow, maybe, to talk about the, the whole idea of, of bonding to see if, if, if doing that's going to allow us to break even, what the rules are, and things like that. So I, I can't I – can't, speak to timeline i think it's probably going to take you know another month or so to get really get all those yeah, details. I, I, there's really no urgency on their end it's it's us as far as i'm concerned you know i mean that but are they looking at other locations not specifically no they're always looking for additional locations so you know i've encouraged them it's attractive to them i think i, I yeah I, they, were, they were they were interested yeah i've encouraged them to come up and you know, let me know. I'll take them on a tour, show them what we've got, and you know the description. And I, I brought a plan down when I originally met with them, so they they have a pretty good idea of, of what we've got, and they're interested. Mm -hmm. So if we assumed it's, that it's a financial decision for them, you know, they've got to do the demographic study and so on to see whether it can be supported. Okay. So if we assume that on our end we made it attractive, and as we assume that on their end that their numbers worked. Are we looking towards, to your point, you kind of mentioned town meeting, but it seems like that would be six months away, an appropriate time to introduce it to town meeting. Not necessarily a vote of any kind, but certainly to keep the town up to date. Well, I mean, I'm perfectly willing to do that. I, I, I personally think what should happen is we as a town need to say to them, like I, like I said, yeah, right. we're interested. Yes, we're, we're interested in pursuing this. And then let them do their due diligence and have them come back and say, yeah, yeah you know what, that's a great place. We'd really like to be there. Oh, you know what, no, we just that's not a place we want to build. Right. And that maybe should happen before I we bring it to a town meeting. Town meeting. Uh, yeah. No, I agree. That's, that's why I asked for the timeline right. for you, which you're saying about 30 days, maybe I'm, a little I'm thinking, longer. I'm thinking we could probably have some information in the next 30 days, yeah. That yeah. leaves about four it's months. It's not going to be for final, them. but. And I don't yeah, know, I don't know how long that takes. And you didn't get a sense from them about a groundbreaking timeline. Oh, they didn't oh he said it could oh, be, yes. yeah, said it could be up to a couple of years. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. So next spring. No. It would take, it would take a while. Spring. It would be a Design. year. Year from next spring. 2019. Spring of 2019. Well, that's fast. That's fast. 2018 is Yeah, I'm not, I don't know what the date is. I can't. I can't tell you what their date will be. He did. He did warn that it would be at least a full year. I mean, oh, sure. it's a full fast. year away. Sure. <laughs> it's, it's it that seems fast, fast, but it's going to be a lot of work. Okay. Uh -huh. I'd be thrilled if we, as a town, said, "Yeah, this is a good idea." They came back and said, "Excuse me, um, look, it looks like it's going to work from our end." And now we start working at to a, towards a town meeting and saying. Details. Towns people say, yeah, yeah this works. Right. Now we come back and right. say to them, okay, we're ready to go. Right. Now how long is it going to take? Right. Yeah. Good point. No, that's why I'm saying it sounds to me like there's a possibility that town meeting in May would be the place to introduce it. Perhaps. Because then you're going to have multiple information sessions and, oh, my gosh. If, if not May, it could be the uh, fall special. The fall special. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, it should go to a special, but whatever. I was very impressed by, by the facility and the staff. And, and this is, I mean, this is obviously a job creator, too, which is oh, yeah, exciting, too. 45 yeah, 45 jobs. And, and it would support local businesses and on and on. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I Thank just you, wanted to Sorry. give you an update. Thank you, Mike. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. You, you too. too. You too, Mike. Happy Hanukkah. What day is it, Hanukkah? Hanukkah. No. 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 It's 12 days. It's still, it's still going. Oh, okay. It's eight days. It started, eight days. It started on the 12th. That's right. Yeah. started on the 12th, eight yeah. days. Got it. Okay. Introduction, introduction I actually, please. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. I actually have two things. Um, I got a text video the other day. Did you uh, introduce yourself, please, sir? Stephen Sherman, Paddock Road. Thank you. I got a text video the other day, and the video showed my granddaughter, who lives in Rutland, going absolutely bonkers. There was a fire truck there, oh. and Mr. and Mrs. Claus got off the fire truck and came in and delivered a present to her. Five years old. Wow. <laughs> Way to go, Rutland Fire Department. The other one I'm not so sure you're going to agree with, but I'm sitting here listening to this poll thing that's been going on for months, and... 
I, I have a hard time with this whole thing going ahead when this project was approved in the first place with information that was not correct to, to one of our boards. I mean, my mind says everything just stops and let's go back and fix this mm. so that it doesn't happen again. I mean, by, by granting this, you're condoning this. I don't know that. I don't think we I don't did. know. I don't know that I 100% agree with you, Steve. You know, you and I go back and forth over this, but um, I think the board has expressed its concerns uh, tonight, in particular, with the granting of only the four poles on the on the understood to be public okay, so what's way. So next? I think that it's true that that plan that was filed at the Registry of Deeds, I believe, is going to need some sort of correction from the town. Uh, at some point here. We need to proceed with the comprehensive road study. We will likely need to do a survey, which was discussed at a prior board's meeting, and then we're gonna need to we're gonna need to file some sort of plan that's more accurate than the plan that was that was filed by the I mean, applicant. If so if I was on that board, I'd I'd feel pretty I don't know what the right word is, embarrassed or taken advantage of. I mean, because if I had signed off on that without having the proper information whether it was intentional or not and i i, I don't know mm -hmm. i and and this whole project is going forward my honest opinion is i think the whole thing is null and void if if the property if the town road is different on that plan that was submitted until it's corrected that's null and void as far as i'm concerned that that whole thing yeah, but I mean, I guess you're agreeing with me, but I mean, what's, so what's next? What's going to happen now? That's up to the planning board. Well, I'm not sure. They would have it to would be our burden. It would be, yeah. It so would, what the burden the would be on us do? to prove that that is incorrect. Okay. I mean, I'm sitting here listening to this and saying, wow. Anyway, Santa Claus was great. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas. Anybody Everybody else for public comment? Everybody else. <laughs> I'm going to sit here. Uh, just two things I want to bring up tonight. Um, had the select board. Dick, for the record. Dick Williams, over Thank you. Thank you. The select board, multi, I, I don't know how many years ago it was, on Palmer Gusset Road, had a similar problem with a road that was never part of uh, Pomegranate that was never turned back over to the people there over the years. And it created a problem. And then at that time, it was brought up that we, we have to do a, a certified road thing, so this will never happen again. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this is like maybe 10, 15 years ago that it happened. And uh, I hope this time, let's get over the hurdle. Let's get this thing taken care of, please. There are multiple multiple cow lanes that I don't want to see turn into roads, cow paths. Um, the other night, uh, at, uh, I was very pleased with the growth management that we had, and just, I don't know if you people know or not, but uh, I got word that the grant did come through for the phase two, and I am so happy about that, that we're pushing on, so thank you. We've been awarded $35,000 for CMRPC to work with us on uh, the fiscal impact study and build out analysis. So it's, it is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Just to follow up to uh, what Dick said, if, if you folks don't approve those other three poles, how can those houses be built? Because if they, if they can't get power... Well, well I, think, I think a private landowner can contract mm -hmm. with national grid and have a pole put in yeah. there's nothing we can do about that people that have thousand okay. foot long driveways contract with, okay. with national grid but if a private landowner goes ahead and does that and asserts that it's private land then it changes the approval not required situation that those those houses right. were being built on nobody else but Public comment. Yes. No. Sure. Well, that's a quick discussion about the uh, select board vacancy. Um, 
You've got your outline here provided by Anita on timeline. Um, if the board was to, you, you can see that um, the earliest date an election could be held would be Tuesday, February 20th, um, um, which would leave, what do we have? March, April. Three months. Five, five, five meetings or so that yep. a board, uh, a board member would serve on a temporary basis. Um, and then Anita has it estimated at six thousand. That's right. Yep. Six thousand dollars. I twelve hundred dollars a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think really it's worth it. Well, we've had I'd like to get twelve hundred dollars a meeting, but <laughs> well, there, there was precedent. Uh, was it eight <laughs> nine years ago when Mr. Yeah. Briggs uh, yeah. left the board uh, to take his municipal position? Um, the board ran for a period of uh, six months. <coughs> I think it was. Longer. Well, well, yeah, that. Almost a year. Almost almost a year. Almost a year. Months. Eleven yeah. months. Eleven months. So, and things still function fine. Okay. So, do we need a motion? No, I don't think so. Just asking. Do we? I, I don't make, think I'm we ask, do. Asking for the record. We need a motion, not no. We don't need that. We're just not going to gonna not do any to not fill it temporarily. Yeah, but board view. I think we just should let it ride like okay. it is, and if we need to make a motion later on to have an election, then we can do that. No, no, no. What we're saying is to for the board to be on the same page that we do not need one, and that we're going to move forward and have the position filled sure. at, the, correct. Yeah. Go ahead. At, correct. at the correct at the annual. Mm -hmm. yep. Go ahead. Yes. That was the motion. <laughs> that we. Can you repeat that, please? Yes. <laughs> uh, the motion is that the board is in agreement that uh, we will proceed with a four member board until the annual election in May. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. License renewals, convict, innkeeper, liquor, and entertainment oh licenses. Uh, I recommend um, voting these as a slate um, for each category contingent on the completion of all inspections and submission of appropriate paperwork. So. We're waiting on, uh, let me just uh, to, to explain, uh, that we're waiting on some building inspections and fire inspections, among other things, and paperwork. So moved. All those in Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 FY19 budget meeting schedule. Uh, so we've set the um, the budget meeting uh, schedule you have before you. Um, I have not heard back from any of these departments, boards, <coughs> committees, or the schools that they are unable to make their appointments. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that these can be uh, joint meetings between the board and finance committee uh, to the extent possible um, in order for everybody to, uh, to hear the same budget request information. I uh, thought we got confirmation from both schools. No? We did. We got okay. confirmation. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. It says tentative, but we since confirmed with both. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're on. Um, and that's going to be the... Eighth. It's going to be Thursday, February 8th, Bay Path at 6.45 p.m. And uh, watch use it at 7.30 p.m. Those are confirmed. Can we post the meeting schedule for the general publics on, the, uh, on our website? Sure. So that the public is aware of when the yes. FinCom is meeting and us? Yes, absolutely. For those that have any interest. Absolutely. Well, you get a lot of interest that night. I'm sorry? You get a lot of interest that night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so. So the budget meetings commence on January 11th and run through February 15th, uh, one or two days a week during that period. Evenings a week, I should say. Um, I'm going to ask uh, the board, um, the chair, to hold on the integrated agreements. I haven't finalized those yet, so can we hold those until January 2nd? Okay. So uh, let's go down to town of town departments. Yeah, we should hold on the other issues. Yep. Too. We're holding on the other issues. Gary, could you uh, please talk to us about the. Uh, Rutland Plow Rates and Bear Farm Road and your little bit you got on there, please. 
You've had yourself a little flurry of activity, haven't you? <laughs> yes, we did. Mm. Okay, I will. We'll talk about the plow rates. Um, I sent the packet out today. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it. I do have copies for everybody if you need it. Uh, first time we approved, you approved plow rates was in 2000, and we followed City of Worcester's plow rates. And at that time, we did have a couple of contractors in town. In 2012, 2013, winter season, we <coughs> approved um, again to follow Worcester plow rates, as that was the last time we had contractors. So now I'm, I'm giving you the plow rates again uh, based on City of Worcester's rates. And I did have to already hire two contractors to plow uh, the first one we had. And there are currently two vacancies in the DPW, and all those that have applied for those positions are not qualified. So it appears that, at least for the short term, hopefully only the short term, we're going to have to go with contractors. Uh, they're assigned to, they're assigned to subdivision, uh, neighborhood, and given their job, and they go. So I'm asking the board to take a look at Worcester's plow rates for this season, 17, 18, and help me to follow suit. Well, so the town can follow suit, so we'll have more people that would be eligible to plow for us. I don't see them. Are they yeah, in yet? I don't see them either. Oh, I said them. Um, all right, I've got copies. Rates proposed are somewhere in between the underneath the state rate, but this is the city of Worcester rate. City of Worcester rate on oh, the last page are the current rates, and that is definitely under the state rate. <clears throat> That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a three quarter ton pickup, four wheel drive, says 42 an hour, state rate. Current rate's 35, and you're proposing 40. The current rate that we pay for uh, 4x4 is 56, and I'm proposing 65. That's not what your first page shows. I know. That's Those, are Those are the old ones. 2000. Those are the old ones. Oh. Page 2 that oh. you have is currently what we are paying. That's page 2 from 2013. Okay. Sorry. So they've never been up since that point. So you want to look at the, you want the board to look at the city of Worcester rates. City of Worcester rates yep. were well, dated 2017-2018, Exhibit One. All right. So Not you want to match those rates? The, I want to match those rates. Yes. Is it because you're not getting any response on the current rates? Or? Because, well, actually, there's, there's there's several contractors in town that really even even question the rates that I paid them for the first one because they have not been up. They'd rather go to Worcester and get paid mm -hmm. the big bucks, if you will. Yeah, I can understand that. Or hit the state road. Actually, state uh, right now, and it's I, I don't like I don't like to, to state it, but uh, we are down for this one to three bodies two vacant and one who is out for um, rotator cuff surgery who will be out for the better part of the winter. Actually, this, as far as snow and ice expenses go, will save money for the town for the winter season. But that being said, I don't want to not fill the positions that we have open. Those rates include um, the truck, the operator, and fuel. They do not fuel up for me. They don't, um, um, and we don't pay a, a separate salary. Hour. We just pay that one hourly rate for the truck and fuel. Where do they get fuel in the middle of the night? They have to, that's, that's their problem. Wait, they have to get fuel. I think the only way if we had a severe storm or uh, um, a, an emergency, state of emergency declared, that we could certainly offer them fuel at our price, but we have not had to do that. But I would not stop or impede the operation of the town uh, because of lack of fuel. <clears throat> so, 
Jerry, can I ask you? We have nine categories here. Worcester has whatever. Twenty. Which ones are we missing? So should I I shouldn't bother looking at the Sanders, right? You don't seem to have <coughs> we can, that. We can and some of the two contractors that one of the two contractors that worked for us does have a sander available. Okay. Uh, I told that person that if I used it I would pay the rate of the truck plus the sander, but we did not use it. We have not had to use it. So I'm just so that's looking why at you okay. I'm just looking at, uh, we'll go from Power Wagon 4x4 four four to, oh, I'm sorry, pickup 4x4 four four down to as far as loader. And the only reason I would get a loader, I do not need a loader, but the only reason I would ask for a loader is if there was a state of emergency declared. At that, at that point, um, as everybody knows, generally speaking, 75% of any funds for state of emergency is reimbursed. Mm -hmm. And if the state kicks in, with that state, then they uh, they throw in the other 25. Um, so front end loader, three cubic yard is equivalent to what? The loader cat 930? Yeah. Yes? Our, <coughs> yes, our loaders have uh, two and a half yard. Our <coughs> bobbles have two and a half yard buckets. Our John Deere has a three. No, I mean, I'm looking at the. Oh, so the price? The rates. The rates. So if I'm looking at our list, which was front end loader, three cubic yard, air Worcester equivalent is loader cat 930 equal? Right. Or we're looking for apples to apples here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're just that. Yeah. Side by side for comparison. Right. right. And then six wheel. But I'm really, like I, I say, um, like I said, Sheila, I'm really not, I'm just showing you all of Worcester rates, but I'm more, I'm more concerned with the, with the smalls, the lights, as opposed no, I, to the heavies. Yeah. No, but so even though it's hard to find them, so three-quarter yeah. ton pickup four-wheel drive was our low end, which looks up, which looks like they're calling just pickup four by four. Mm -hmm. And there we were at thirty-five, and they're at sixty-five. You were at thirty-five in two thousand. In two thousand. You were at fifty-six in two thousand. Fifty-six now. Yeah. It, that's really no, old. I, I know it's. I know. It's yeah. It's just tough to line them up. There you Gary, go. Gary, if you were to go down the list of the pr previously approved town rates back in 03, oh, three or what 13. are your recommended rates for each of those pieces of equipment on that on page three one? Or 13. The page one. Just just go down the list and give your recommended rates for each one. So in other words, the three quarter ton. Okay, yeah. three quarter ton would yes. be 65. Okay. Okay, there we go. One ton would uh, over 11,000 would be 70. Okay. Uh, one ton dually, seventy-five. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't go any further mm -hmm. on hiring other pieces of equipment, but well, I'll continue down okay. the list if you want me no, to. No, I want to know what you would take. I just want to see. Six the wheel, twenty-five hundred. Three quarter ton pickup, one ton and one ton dually. And that's it. Ho yep. Hold on. We've got oh. two other rates here. We've got the six wheel, twenty-five hundred plus GVW with ten foot plow. That we used to use at that's what i call a heavy a small dually or one ton uh, so that's 68. well let's just say the state comparison here so that was 68. what are you proposing for that now which one are you looking at mike uh would be one two three fourth down on your list on the first page one yeah the page one because that's where we're using comparisons here six wheel twenty five thousand plus gvw with 10 foot plow Seventy-seven dollars is up to thirty-four nine. Okay, so seventy-seven. So that's seventy-seven. Okay, the next one is the ten-wheel dump with ten-foot plow. Again. Again, we'll go with the GVW. That does not. The second one doesn't have a GVW, but you had it at eighty-three. Ten-wheel dump, no GVW. You went from a six-wheel to a ten-wheel dump. I would not. I would not contemplate a ten-wheel dump. I understand that, but you have a published rate here that we paid back in the, f in the past. So if we're gonna have published rates, let's. Gary, would that be a hundred and two dollars then? No, you know, I I think I'm. I'm in a better place. I can. I see what you're doing, Gary. I think. Um, I don't. I I think this, two thousand list is throwing me off. So, and I get what you're saying, that you basically just want to take Exhibit 1's Worcester 2017-18 and pick and choose from it. <coughs> Whereas I'm looking at Rutland going, well, wait a minute, out of picking and choosing out of Worcester, what are you actually picking and choosing? But the rates, he, he's saying he's not going to use any of the big stuff, which is at the 120 and hour right. level. I get that. 
but you might but need it. But if I did, yeah, this right. is what looking you'd want for to pay. approval of Worcester's yeah. rates for yeah. the entire list. Right, for the, for entire, the entire list. list. So it really doesn't matter what we're going to do. Thank you. So you would use a 35,000 GVW sander? No, I wouldn't. Or a triaxle? I'm. No, you're asking not, for the list, I'm though. Not saying, I'm, I'm but you're just, asking I'm for the list. I'm just looking for approval for the list. Right. I'm not going to use that's all the items on that list. That's I'm looking for that approval. List. I don't think we have to go through play by play, step by step on this. No, I, I, I apologize. I was looking at old stuff and trying to compare them, and it is not apples to apples. So, hypothetically, that's true. You, if if I totally see where you're headed, obviously Worcester's equipment list is going to be different from Rutland's. Could you just do at least for me a favor, assuming this all got approved tonight? Could you maybe just get us this back with the stars of the equipment you plan, you expect to have to use? What I expect to have to right? use. Right, because it's not going to be all 20. Right. What I expect to have to use was, as I initially stated, the pickup 4x4, the um, 11,000 GBW 6x6, and over 11,000 GBW, um, which is. Yeah. Okay, so you get a, a one ton and a one and a half ton, and that's as high as I would go. Anything oh. else that I would use, but I want the whole list yeah, approved. Yeah. Anything else I would use would only be in a declared state of emergency. Right. Now, if all my three loaders, then I would go out and get a loader. <laughs> what? What happened? <gasps> broke down. Yeah. If they broke down. I apologize. No, for a family, you're okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand me, Dick? Yes, I do. Yeah, I got it. It was, uh, yeah. We would have been better off without the old lifting. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, plow rates as Exhibit 1. Uh, for the 2017-18 rate, second. Correct. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you, Good. Gary. Okay, the next thing you have on the list, Mr. Chairman, is discussion about Bear Farm. Now, I did have a meeting, and I don't know if everybody has this notice, but I had a meeting on last Friday with Mr. Blair and Mr. Hassett. I found it to be a productive meeting, and I found everything, of all of the concerns of all parties were discussed, and we are coming to resolve to take care of those issues. And some of the things, um, like I've stated, are the, wind, um, the windrow that has to be removed, put back, it has to be regraded, rebladed back into the road. That would keep Mr. Hassett happy. Mm -hmm. I've also agreed to, and so has Mr. Blair, that if we, during our excavation of regular town construction, come upon field stone or boulders that are taking out of ditches, we will certainly have no problem bringing them to him so he can rebuild the section of stone wall that he's talking about. Um, I did talk to both of them, especially Mr. Hassett, because he was under the the belief that the millings in question were regulated. So I explained to him that prior to 1985, it was a regulated substance because of chemical composition. Before that time, there was arsenic and lead in that material, but post-85, those um, ingredients are no longer used, and it is not a regulated substance. I did inform both Mr. Blair and Mr. Hassett that I would certainly research that with Board of Health. I have confirmed with Board of Health it is not a permittable substance to use on a roadway. So therefore, there's no permit in question and it is okay to use that. Um, again, uh, and on top of that, Mr. Blair did agree to clean up the debris that was in question along the roadway and also the stuff that, that you saw, uh, Margaret, when you were up there. So that will be taken care of. It's not all going to be done overnight. And uh, more importantly, Mr. Blair stated in the meeting that once the loop is approved or the extension of Grizzly, for the lack of a better term, that comes out further down on Britain, that that road will be returned to as close to original as possible. There's things that are standing in the way, such as a couple of crossings, um, that MEPA, he's waiting for MEPA certification, he's waiting for Army Corps, um, he's waiting for water quality, and um, obviously DEP and DCR. All those things are being looked into, and uh, he agreed to keep the town, me, and um, Mr. Hassett in the loop with this 
It was a very open conversation. Um, probably took a couple of hours, but I thought it to be very productive. And we are on our way with them. Um, just I apologize that I didn't do that earlier than that, but um, I think um, I think we made some good headway, and I think we'll we'll be able to move forward on that. Thank you for good. getting thank you for getting them in the, any, the same you know, room any to questions talk. on that item. No. Okay. Good. Uh, the next thing I have is uh, just a, a brief snow and ice update. Update. Um, so far this season, we've purchased 800 ton of salt at 63.64 a ton, coming to about um, $51,000. We have purchased 200 ton of sand <clears throat> at about 15 bucks a ton. That costs roughly 3,000. So the total. Of those two um, are $53,858. We have a budget of $154,500. Minus that amount, obviously, we have $100,650 left in the snow and ice budget. Um, the shed is now full. I find that we're using a lot less material that we have in the past because of the mixture and the application of straight salt. So I, I hope to get through the season, depending on what kind of season we have. Um, Notwithstanding, I hope it snows like a like a lot, for lack of a better term. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's just an update. The shed is full. Everything's good. Um, I think they uh, they fared the storms pretty well, and I'm very happy with their performance. Um, the draft form, the proposal for sewer rate study is not yet complete. Um, I talked to Weston and Sampson today, and I should have that by the end of, the, end of a week. I did uh, recently obtain the last agreement that was signed with Upper Blackstone. Um, and it was, it's, was supposed to be actually renewed about seven years ago, and that never happened. So I have asked, asked that question. I do have a copy of that agreement, Margaret. I don't know if you've seen that one. But I do have that in my office. And, and the last one um, will be fun. Because I have a proposal from Mr. Blair for the repair of Sharnock, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I've, I've done is put together what it would cost the town to repair or rehabilitate 3,200 feet of roadway at 22 feet wide. Is that to pre-construction condition? Or is that just that patching? That is a full reclaim and okay. pave. Okay. Because, well, anyway, 3,200 3, feet by 22 feet wide, which would take about, it would be about 8,000 square yards of, of reclamation, uh, which is uh, roughly 12.7. Four inches of pave, which is roughly 1,800 ton at $100,000. So the total of those two is $113,419.20. That is what it would cost to, to redo, to rehabilitate Charnock. From Maine to Bryce Lemon. How much? Say this figure again. The total, total. Total cost for Chapter 90 with Chapter 90 funds at town pricing is $113,419. Now, in my measurements, I'm showing four feet on both sides of the road, which was excavated for water sewer, which is roughly one third of the paved surface. If we were able to <coughs> which I'm in the process of doing with Mr. Blair, 30% of that project would be uh, roughly $38,000, which would leave a cost to the town, if that was accepted, about $76,000. Uh, he is uh, putting, now, in this, this coming next fiscal, I should say, we will be able to utilize the entire, generally speaking, 377000 for road repair. We didn't get to use any last year because of phase two of the TIP. This year we have that money. The problem we have and we will have, and you'll get a lot of a flack about, is uh, boy, are we going to rehabilitate this road when so many people are screaming about others? To me, the condition of Sharnock prior to this construction was not deplorable, but any piece of paved service can always be repaired. In my mind, it did not need repair. But also in my mind, to just saw cut the eight feet um, and repave is really not going to stabilize the roadway because you've got that broken seam four feet in. Sure, you can you can excavate. Sure, you can you can uh, um, put a good 
subsurface in there and, and pave it and seal the seams and the whole nine yards. But no, um, that's not going to do it. That's a Band-Aid. That's not a permanent fix. The reason, only reason I'm bringing it to you is, and, and again, I have not put a final negotiation in with Blair, but I'm bringing it to you because that's the flack you would get if we were to do this roadway when there's so many others in town that need it. So I'm just, it's just informational. I have a question, if I may, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. If that road had been saw cut in the first place instead of dug up with an excavator, would the cost have been that high to repair it? Yeah, because you're still filling, you're still filling the same amount of surface. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it needed that much taken out. Okay. So at the at the widest point, it's it's four feet. So I would want, I would prefer, I would almost demand, take that word almost out of there, demand that it's a straight saw cut as opposed and, to a and jagged And can edge. we do that by regulation locally in the future? Demand, can we require in the future that all of those excavations, rather than yeah. having an excavator, can we demand that those be yeah. saw cut? What's his proposal? He is probably, if he's watching, this is the first time he's heard the money. So I don't have a proposal from him. All I do is have an offer that the contractor, <coughs> um, which we all know the name and we don't have to <coughs> repeat again, and the builder will, will cough up some of the dough. I just don't have a figure for him because I haven't sat down with him yet. Mr. Just Sullivan. Have a general question. So, was this road, excuse me, through the chair, was this road scheduled to be re <coughs> No, sir. No, no. So, that means you're taking. That means you're taking. If it's $75,000 out of your budget for other roads to fix this road, that's correct. You wouldn't have done. If that $75,000 was agreed upon. Right. And negotiated, so. yes. Otherwise, you're taking $113,000, $114,000 out of uh, three hundred dollars So, a third of our Chapter 90 eligible funds. I guess my question is, why should the town have to pay anything to fix that road if you weren't planning on doing it? Because you're taking money away from other roads that need to be, that you had scheduled to be fixed. I understand, and I agree with what you say. Okay. It was not deplorable. Actually, I thought, and I drove the whole road again today when I did the uh, final measurements, and I, I found the rest of it to be in pretty good shape. I, I drove it today, too, and thought the same thing. But I don't know if you've driven on where he's talking about the 3,200 feet or whatever. It's a different story. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not I'm not asking for a vote or a motion. I'm just wanting to give you a heads up of where we are. Um, well, I want the road brought back to what it was. Thank okay. you. And that, I think, but let me check, is it. That's it for you. No questions? Wendy. <laughs> so we're going to go quickly to the town administrator about uh, recreational marijuana survey. So if the chair would allow, I'd like to, I'd like to refer to Peter Crane on this. Oh, you you ducking out on this? Well, I'm not. No, I am aware of the survey, and I'd like Peter to. There's going to be an insert in the uh, in the annual the street list mailing. So Peter. <laughs> Peter Crane, Six Nights Way, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, when I was at this board meeting two meetings ago, we discussed briefly a moratorium because we don't know what kind of bylaw for recreational marijuana to write, to, to write based upon the vote of the town in question four. And eventually I figured out the obvious way to find out what the town would like to do, and that's to, yeah. to actually ask the town to, to put together a survey. Uh, and after a bit of thinking, I realized that the best way to ask the town is by inserting something with the town census that would get returned with the town census. It has been, the information I've been given is that is the most reliable way to get the best set of data and the most number of valuable responses back from the town. Uh, I've spoken to the town clerk and she says that uh, we have space for, we, we, we have the weight available for half a sheet of paper, <laughs> and then, and if we do that, then we won't increase the postage. Oh. Uh, and so I've done it in a third of a sheet of paper, if I may. Uh, this, this is two sheets because the printer I had does not do du double-sided printing. So it'll be front back. So it'll be front and back on a single third of a sheet of paper. 
and gives, as you can see, background information on the front saying, this is why we're asking you these questions. We really need to know what you want, what you want us to do. Can and on the back side are the two simplest questions we could think of and a space for comments. Can you read it? Why? Yeah. Certainly. In large, large font, we want your opinion. The town of Rutland has no bylaws concerning the number or, lo or location of recreational marijuana sales, growth, or cultivation facilities. These businesses would be limited to zoning districts that include industrial, business, and mixed uses. Without a bylaw, there are few restrictions on how close such a facility could be to a school, church, or residence. The town is considering bylaw options. This bylaw might completely ban these businesses, or the bylaw might allow a limited number. This survey will determine the nature of the bylaw to be proposed and voted at a future town meeting. This new bylaw will replace any temporary moratorium the town enacts. This will be a zoning bylaw, so a supermajority, two-thirds, of voters are needed to approve it. Rutland voters narrowly defeated, 49% yes, 50.4% no, Massachusetts Question 4, legalizing recreational marijuana in November of 2016. This vote gave no clear mandate to write a specific bylaw. Yeah. Hmm. On the back side, please answer the following questions. Would you vote to approve a bylaw that to allow the limited presence of recreational marijuana <laughs> businesses in town? A yes and a no. Question two, would you vote to approve a bylaw to prohibit recreational businesses in town? Yes or no? A space for comments. Please return this filled out form with the town census. Hopefully straightforward. Uh, this has been reviewed by my wife, the town clerk, the town administrator, and the bylaw review subcommittee. Well, that's great for you to thank you. Okay. I, th I have to ask a stupid question. Sure. Why not just ask one question? Because Approve or prohibit, allow or prohibit. Oh, because there's so much in between. There's That's so right. much gray area with this oh. particular. And there law. are some people who might, it, it's, who might vote for both. <coughs> who might say, would you vote for something to allow? <coughs> yes. Would you vote for something to prohibit? Yes. yes. Depending on because what it was. They'll, they'll, they, because the presence of the bylaw of any bylaw gives the town power. And the absence of bylaw does <laughs> removes our power. There are going to be a number of different options for recreational marijuana sales and distribution that the town can actually approve individually. No, I know, but that's one question. Approve a bylaw to allow the limited presence. You either approve that bylaw. If you, if you don't approve it, you are prohibiting recreational marijuana. No, that's not true. That is absolutely not true. If we have no bylaw in place, we have no provisions to prevent. All right. Okay, so Peter, I... Because of the way the law was written. The way no, the law I, was... I see where you're headed now, but that took me questioning you, what, three times back and forth. I see what you're saying, but is the normal census respondent going to see where you're headed about the presence of a bylaw? I think that's why he's asking it's, more questions. Uh, it's okay. That's why we say it right up front. Yeah. No, I read it. This, this is I what's called it. information dense. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's well done. <coughs> yes, sir. She was fine with it after after I made her modifications. <laughs> of course. I, I just have one comment. The, yes, sir. The reference to um, if there's no bylaw, you can, mm -hmm. you'd be able to put it next to church or school and so on. It sounds to me like you're saying we really need these folks or, or or you could have it where we don't where we don't want it and that's it, exactly it, correct well no i understand yeah. that but it sounds to me when i heard it and i'd have to read it some more that you're saying hey vote for this thing because we really don't want them where they are and i don't know that you should be kind of advocating yeah i mean do you do you folks see what i'm saying mm. okay i mean if I, you don't it's no, I do. It passed at the state level. So obviously there's been a few communities, right? Is it Milford, Menton? I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know how it is. Just open up. Written by specifically spelling out the schools, the churches, and so on. 
It's, yeah. You either want them or you don't. No, I think I was headed in the different different direction. The towns that have imposed full moratoriums may well be challenged. Of course, they will. at the court level. And I'm not saying a full moratorium. All I'm well, that full moratorium can last beyond December of 2018. Right. Do, do you actually mean? I'm, I'm sorry. Let me just I don't know that I. I didn't Sheila, think I or do meant. you actually mean a moratorium? I did mean a ban. I meant a ban. A so ban. Thank you. Excuse my language. Because hmm. moratoria yeah. are. Are temporary. temporary. Right. Must expire by December 31, 2018. Right. I think any thought person. to putting your phone number on here if anybody has any questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put your wife's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Westboro banned it in March. Um, Milford, is it? Yep, Milford banned so, it in September. Mm -hmm. Banned the sale. So to your point, a full ban, which would be. They voted overwhelm. Well, I wouldn't say it was overwhelming, but they did vote to approve a bylaw to prohibit. I think I. Anyway, if, if I may, uh, Sean Moore, uh, Three Edson. I'm also on the uh, bylaw stuff committee, approving. Uh, I gave my okay for it just to go out, but I do see where he, this gentleman here Mike. was. Mike was saying that just the wording when you put in schools, churches whatever it could um lead someone to go another way that saying that these these facilities are going to be put here so maybe to leave that wording out and just put the town as a whole and not to all know. right so i i, I I'm sorry if I, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, I, I understand that too. Um, and and to take out the how close such a facility could be uh, to a school church or residence, you it could say something like without a bylaw, there are there are few such restrictions, mm. because you have a sentence where right there. Sure. Okay. No limitations where they can go. Yeah. No few limitations. Okay. It turns out that there are that there is a statutory limit of 500 feet from a school. Mm. Well, there you go. Isn't that enough? Is it? I well, know. I don't know. I, I, no, this, no, this, it, it, there's an entire bylaw right. process we've got to go question, through. Yeah, okay. Medical, we had a <coughs> so, so a survey will be coming. It'll be on yellow paper, not green, because there's going to be uh, another pamphlet that's going to be included in it. Uh, uh, watch yourself. Was there a pun intended? I, I, that's, yeah. that's exactly Gosh, how roll. I read that. Wow. You can't send us a little message like that. The also has an insert. That's right. And that's That's green. Um, Lynn, when are the census mailers going out? Uh, it January. should be within the first two weeks of January. And they're and they're due in March. Okay, so again, town meeting in May. What are we? Well, special town meeting before April. No, well, well, actually, I'm not suggesting we. There is no possibility that we would have a bylaw ready in time for annual. None. Zero. There would be a special late in the year. Next if, fall. Sometime in the fall. Why no possibility by you can Because we aren't going to know by in order to, to pass the law, it's gotta be both the general and a zoning bylaw. Zoning bylaws require public hearings. We have a process right. we must go through. And we don't have word one written because we don't know what bylaw to write. Uh, I know right. that there are people who but would prefer that we just ban outright, but I'm not convinced the yet state, that the state the state's town going to be working to. on their regulations until spring, mm -hmm. so it makes it difficult. Okay, why wouldn't we not reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. write both bylaws, and have public information sessions on the possibility of both, and move forward? Because we have a limited number of people to to do the work that it's going to take to write it, the ban is is very, very easy because we have templates from KP Law. But one to, and to allow is a lot more work. It is a slog. And what are the, Dick, do you remember what I gave for a timeline? How, how much time do we have to actually write a bylaw? Was it five months total? No more than five months? That's it. Yeah, five months. From, from April 1. Hmm. That's once the state's done with all that's their right. work. That's right. Yeah. And that is, that's assumed that we get enough inf information from the state. And we don't know everywhere they're going to go, but we don't have time and people to write an arbitrary 
even two bylaws is tough for this. This is hard, hard work. Are there other communities that have voted to allow it? <coughs> I, mean, I don't know. I haven't looked into it. You know, can you just copy those? I mean, certainly use them as a template. Um, I know what Barry is doing, and they're still working on it. I know that they have had information sessions, but they haven't come before town meeting yet, to my knowledge. So, Sterling, they've been working on it all year. Do you know where they are? I do not know. And Lester's... We're all kind of in a holding pattern because of what's happening at the state. So the state really needs to... Well, be. no, except some communities have taken very definitive action, right? There's a handful some that have, have just... Some have, and some have no. gotten stuck. I mean, look at Sturbridge. You know, Sturbridge approved it. What was it? They, they approved it at the uh, November election, or they defeated it at the November election and approved it. Uh, subsequent to that at a local election and so. By the way, this is also made even more complicated by whether or not we need to have a ballot as well. So it may actually be a general bylaw, a zoning bylaw, and a ballot in our worst case. Which would be May of 19 for a ballot. Or a special. Yeah. Because whatever bylaws we pass They've got to be completely through the approval process by December, uh, by January 1, 2019, because the moratorium must be over by then. And again, if you don't have an active bylaw, an, an accepted bylaw in place when someone submits uh, an, an application to the Cannabis Control Commission, then the town has no say in what, and whether or not it's approved. But how are you supposed to write a bylaw when the state hasn't finished with their regulations yet? <laughs> Welcome Catch to magic. 22. That's right. This is all magic front to us. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. But, oh, we'll okay, but, but towns are getting it done. They are, right? Lester, is Lester open? Open. Lester's open for business. Yep. And some towns How have could they be it. open for business? They, they can't have a license no, yet. No, they'd be open for business for medical at this point, but, but they can't do recreational yet. Recreational, no license can possibly be passed before medical. April 1, 2018. It's medical. Lester is medical. Yeah. Yeah. medical. Yeah, it's growth of medical. And we've got medical. Hmm. So I don't know which, I, I know I will be before you again someday in the future with more bylaws. Uh, I will mention that the moratorium bylaw has been put before the bylaw review subcommittee and approved. It'll be on the agenda for the next planning board meeting because it's a zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm going to ask an unrelated to marijuana question. Mm -hmm. The bylaw subcommittee, because you mentioned a couple times about people and just time and, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, at what point are we going to make this not, it's not, it's not supposed to be a subcommittee. The role of where this subcommittee is right now was supposed to be planning specific. It's taken on far greater responsibilities and so to me it's time for whatever we need to do I've provided the bylaw um, the bylaw subcommittee um, information from uh, multiple towns on different um, committees that have been established either by select board votes or by the planning board or by bylaw just to give them something to start um, start thinking about to really formalize the charge moving forward the bylaw subcommittee at the last meeting reviewed an updated charge for the planning board and I that's I believe supposed to be on the planning board's next agenda as well okay but so you probably heard my objections to PEC right mm -hmm. and how they shouldn't be in charge of dismantling themselves this is a little bit what's going on right I, now you're putting I, yourself in charge I am not a member of the bylaw review subcommittee that's, oh, that's a fair point <laughs> So I will neither, yes, I will neither, <laughs> neither condemn nor affirm <laughs> anything. I've asked oh. the subcommittee to put it on their next agenda okay. for a discussion. Okay. Um, I only have one other thing under my updates. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that is community <coughs> compact. I've talked about streamlined permitting. Um, I did put in a best practice application under um, 
um, under Housing and Economic Development, which happened to be implementation of streamlined permitting. And I spoke with the state today. It looks like they're going to try to to help us, hopefully, with some startup <coughs> funding for streamlined permitting, um, some training, and getting everybody, all permitting authorities, internally uh, on board, so we can actually implement implement it. So hopefully, they're they're going to be approving that. And the second area was. Um, uh, financial trend monitoring and, and forecasting. So I think that we'll be we'll be able to get that too. That's it. Excuse me. Oh yeah, we have a we have a demonstration by a vendor tomorrow afternoon actually on streamlined permitting just to give everybody a kind of a sense of what it's all about. But there there are multiple vendors, so this is just going to be kind of an introduction to streamlined permitting. Where is it going to be held? Uh, here in this building uh, because they need a projector. I think we're doing it in the small meeting room. At least I hope I reserved the room. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.